Right, right. Now let's move, move on to the story of Henry Kissinger. Finally, he has, you know, uh, he, he is gone. He is gone from this earth. But because a lot of people have looked at him as a war criminal, and that is why there he has gotten a Nobel Peace Prize. People have loved him for that. Many people have hated it for that. So there was always a lot of many people considered him as an American patriot, as the uh, you know, one who uh, who loved the American way of life and did everything to protect it. So in that aspect, many people will look at it in their own manner. Independently, how do you look at it? Who was Henry Kissinger? Finally, how will the world remember him? How do you see it all? Uh, you know, it's funny. There is a saying, only the good die young. If that saying is true, <laughs> Henry Kissinger, who lived to be a hundred, is <laughs> the <laughs> illustrates uh, this a saying. His legacy is controversial and for good reason. He was very much part of the uh, until his dying day. He never repent, recanted his support for China and its imperial ambitions, uh, which is terrible for the United States as an American. Uh, forget you know the global community as an American. He should have come to understand that there, China is never going to be argued out of looking down on everyone, including the U.S. But that, that's just fine uh, anyone can be wrong and it's not criminal to have wrong foreign policy views the problem is when these uh, wrong foreign policy views uh, turn into a downward completely unethical implementation of policies as was the case with Cambodia uh, we don't right. need to retell that story the people there remember all too well and of course back in the Pakistan abuses in back Bangladesh, which of course caused a massive security problem for ancient uh, horrific human rights abuses. So his complete disregard for human rights made him not a real politic, politician, but quite the opposite, a very short-sighted uh, politician who did not understand that grotesque human rights abuses turn into massive security problems and uh, they're detrimental toward peace and stability. So I think his legacy is wrong. All the people who are suddenly writing hagiographies of him, I have no idea who they're trying to impress. He's not even there. He had somehow become the godfather of foreign policy and every leader and every foreign policy thinker and journalist was trying to get in on him before his death. But I don't, just because he lived a long time, just because he was successful personally as in making an impact that doesn't make that impact desirable or good. So yes, his legacy is huge, but it's not positive. A lot of it is highly damaging, and the impact of it we are seeing to this day, in my opinion. Right, right. Uh, uh, Kissinger was, you know, of a man of a different era altogether. Born in 1923s, that was his family had to flee from Germany uh, during those tough times. He was, you know, born in a Jewish family, came to the U.S. And, and then he went into, he fought there. He fought, fought at the Battle of the World, be, uh, was part of this whole World War II, and then built his life back in the U.S., studying political science and getting into it. And the good uh, the thing is that whether love him or hate him, but almost every president after this, once he was in the midst, in the power corridors, they consulted him. Was it, what was it that people... Whatever their opinion, people in power always wanted his opinion. Even till today, he was known uh, famous for his shuttle diplomacy. And this continued even at this age. What was it about him that, you know, they always needed him around? And is there another man that could take his place? Obviously, in history, there are always people around. But what was special about him? And what will the American foreign policy or diplomats will miss? Or the presidents even will miss about him, about his, you know, going away from this active life. You know what? I'm going to say something extremely controversial. I think a lot of this presidential co-towing to somebody whose legacy was quite wrong, quite short-sighted, quite self-serving, and, and sometimes downright anti-Semitic. 
as 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 with the cry you know as with the time he he did not want to send arms um to to israel and, and nixon who is not known for his love of jews or israel uh, had to actually intervene you know what if people are looking to embrace that to virtue signal because he was an intelligence person he was not anyone foolish uh or f who failed to understand issues he was wrong-handed he was arrogant in that he refused to change his mind and he was uh you know I, I i'm not even going to speculate on his motivations but i can talk about the impact of them and the impact was without a question uh damaging policy and so when i see presidents go after time after time again to somebody who wasn't just wrong once or twice and admitted and reconsidered their action and is seeking the wisdom of somebody who's had to grapple with different complex problems but when they're going to somebody who's been adamantly wrong and the principles by which he operated were wrong uh you know it makes me wonder whether this is not the emperor is naked phenomenon where people are afraid to admit that this fixture foreign policy uh is just a, an empty suit someone who's uh, who should be discarded because so much of washington is built on the policies and the legacy of the past uh precedents political precedents that are very now, now very difficult to dislodge and i think this conventional way of thinking this establishmentarianism is serving a, a consequent um administration is quite bad like quite poorly i think the reason our foreign policy has, has gone off the rail so much and has been so entrenched in uh in troops uh that need to be discarded and uh you know very short-sighted very bubble mentality is precisely because everyone is afraid to say the emperor is naked we need to move on from past mistakes from past individuals however impactful who did damage we have to admit that this never worked and it's not going to work just because we tried again now can we find masterful diplomats uh with you know diverse complex experiences i, I have no doubt that one day uh such people will emerge right now it's very difficult to say because this is something that can only be judged in hindsight we've had we've got we've had those uh types of diplomats before uh, aside from Henry Kissinger right now it's very hard to say who they are uh, because quite frankly a lot of our diplomacy is very shallow very short-sighted very tactical um and not very impactful in a positive way that doesn't mean that out of this morass we won't uh, see great diplomats in the future maybe they are already there and we just don't uh, see them maybe it's in the process the history is in the process of being made but do we necessarily need titans of wrong-headed policies uh, just to make us feel good about ourselves do we need one guy one person uh, to tell us how to think no we can learn the art of diplomacy and foreign policy from various different examples and from the many hard-working people who uh are, try who are dedicated to promoting u.s interests and global peace and prosperity so i think this is something that can be found we ca can learn from many different people we don't need to just rely on a couple of big influencers in this sphere absolutely absolutely henry kissinger may be gone but it, he has left a lot for people to continue to talk about especially in the last so many years you know the world has changed the way he has impacted all those things positively or negatively people will see it in their own ways countries will see it in their own ways but I'm sure a lot of uh, people will try and understand and gain insights into what could have done been done better and how we can look at foreign policy perhaps in a better manner. Be that as it may, let's move on to other issues in terms of 